Hello, hello friends, Ryan here, and it's time for more of Voice of Cards. Isle Dragon Roars. Really enjoying this so far. Last time had Riddus join our party. After her flute playing skills messed up her house, unfortunately. Summoned a fire creature to and burnt it down, unfortunately. But yeah, it's a new place to explore. We have to go east to Unionville. <laughs> an event. Lying in the grass, you find an old telescope. You figure a look at the path ahead can't hurt, and pick it up. Okay. Peering through the lens, you see something in the distance, but you can't tell exactly what. Is that a sword? All you know is there's something up ahead. You should be able to tell for certain what it is if you get closer. What will you do? Inch closer? You leave the janky telescope where you found it and make your way cautiously toward what you saw. I feel like it's a sword. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Looks like it was only an old woman. A really big butcher's knife? You try to say hello, but she wanders off without even registering your presence. Oh, okay. Bye. Another event. A bizarre rock appears. Oh, not those. It seems primed to explode. Roll the dice to see what happens. What it becomes after it explodes. Oh dear. The bizarre Money! rock transformed into a gold rock. Five hundred J. Thank you. Hey, treasure. Five. I should probably go where I'm supposed to go. An event. With a um. whoosh of displaced air, something shoots across the path right in front of you. What is that thing? Well, the top. A monster. Careful not to attract attention to yourself. You sneak a glance in the direction the thing flew. Yep. Monster. Just like you thought. The monster rolls gleefully across the ground, reminding you of Mar. Your expression softens. Your friends give you strange looks. With a brisk clearing of the throat, you stride away. Ah, it reminded them of Mar. That's cute. Mar is adorable. I just follow this path. Is that it? The weirdest path ever. Up Let's to Unionville. Let's head to Unionville first, shall we? Okay. Let's go. There it is. Oh, I didn't even notice. It wasn't green. Who cares? Glancing in the direction it went, you see some sort of bottle on the ground. You head over for a closer look. It's a bottle of medicine, just like you thought. It'd be a waste to just leave it there. So you pick it up and put it in your pack. Oh, Pepper Upper. Nice. I gotta get rid of something, though. Alright, cool. To Unionville, I made it finally. You see something approaching from up ahead. A monster. A monster, Melanie shouts, readying for battle. Mr. Flobby, get back here. It's dangerous out there, a young girl chides, taking the creature back to the village. Mr. Flobby? It seems you've finally arrived at Unionville, a village where humans and monsters live together in peace. Oh, that's awesome. What a weird place, remarks Riddus lightheartedly. I like it. We aren't staying a moment longer than necessary, says an unsettled Melanie, her distaste for monsters plain on her face. But, but we have Mar. As the dozens of Unionville what they know about the dragon. And you like... 
Uh, I can go back. I'm good. We have an inn, item shop, armor, game parlor. I haven't played the game in a while. See what you have to buy real quick. Ooh, Mistral Blade. The blade of a famous bounty hunter of a thousand. We have enough. Definitely make you stronger because I have to use you. I will equip. Well, that's expensive. I have the Ravagers. Thunderstaff. Ooh, the staff of a famous magician. Definitely buying and equipping this one. That's awesome. <laughs> so expensive, though. Air splitter. Okay. Bow of a famous hunter. Yes, they're all from famous people, aren't they? Knight's armor. Can't have that. Nice chainmail. Good, I found that. Airy dress. Ooh, okay. The garb of a famous hunter. Wait. Who can I put it on? I can go on both the girls. Both the ladies. No, I'll need yours. Need more defense. Kind of getting attacked a bit. Fire stay ring protects against fire. Water stay against water. Wind stay, lightning stay, poison stay. Okay. Thank you. That's all for now. Let's go talk to people. The woman frowns deeply, claiming the cakes she bought for her beloved furball have all been eaten by someone else. Beloved furball. Oh, you the furball? Quiet furball sits with crumbs around its mouth. Yeah, I think it ate those cakes. How cute. The child says his monster friend left the village suddenly to go back home. He claims the headman told him that he could go home when he grew up too. The little orc child pouts, but I don't know where my home is. If he's not used to combat, it's no good to leave him to die out there. You ask the old man if he knows anything about the dragon. No, sir, he answers. All I know is that it brings more trouble to this already troubled world. But our headman is a wise and worldly man. He might know something, he remarks, pointing at a house not far away. Okay, I will talk to him last. I want to chaff everyone else first. The little goblin sulks. As he gazes upon the withering flowers he tried so desperately to take care of, he looks at you with tears in his eyes, silently begging you for help. Oh, I really want those flowers to grow. You use something to save the woolly flowers. Um. Um. <laughs> give them some salve or dump water. You pour the salve onto the flowers, and they stand up tall. Nice. The goblin cries out in happiness and thanks you for your help. He then holds something out to you. What is... Oh, the next card. Nice. The fifth one. See, mysterious card five for the goblin. Beautiful the blossom. The goblin stares lovingly at the beautiful flowers. That's really cool. And gobbles them up. Hey, what? Healthy flowers are the tastiest, he proclaims in glee. Did he grow those flowers just to eat them? Unfortunately, yes. That was not what I expected, but okay. A young boy wanders up to your group in wide-eyed wonder. You surmise his curiosity stems from the lack of travelers visiting the village. You realize you are right when he assails you with questions about your origins and adventures. The Inquisition leaves you exhausted. 
<laughs> okay, that's cool. So the necessary requirements unlock the simple boy's flip side story. Okay, can't go there. Slime. However, does your mouth become so filthy, Mr. Flobby? Sighs the girl as she wipes the slime clean. The thing is, there's like a skull inside the slime, which is kind of creepy, but okay, Mr. Floppy. Clearly embarrassed, Mr. Flobby murmurs, that's not my mouth. Wait, what is it? Oh, no. Um. Okay. What was that, Mr. Floppy? The little orc child is engrossed in a fairy tale. The title reads, The Legend of the Dragon. Ooh, Legend of the Dragon. What sort of story could this be? Take a peek. You take a peek into the picture book and come across a passage that piques your interest. Defeated by the king's army, the dragon hid itself away. To where, you wonder? Then recall that this is merely a fairy tale. Fairy tales can have some truth to them, sometimes. The village headman is a renowned gourmet, and rumor has it he only dines on the finest foods. The man says he wishes he too could have such a lavish meal just once in his life. His deep desire for delicacies only growing with time. Average man's story. Wow, a new friend, and so Aww. big, too, the furball exclaims in glee as it rushes over to Mar. A new friend, that's cute. Mar stares off into the distance as the furball snuggles up to his leg. For some reason, Riddus joins in on the cuddling. That was cute. Lately, a suspicious man cloaked in black has been seen wandering about the village outskirts. Has he now? The old woman looks at Melanie and remarks that he was dressed just like her. Like Kaine? No. Seeing it's her normal attire they're looking at. And it's time to go check out the elf's house. Travelers, you hear a voice call from somewhere. You do, but where? Down here, at thy feet. You look down to see a small clump of fur by your boots. The clump of fur speaks. I am Lappy, and I should like to journey forth with thee. You, you would? Hi, Lappy. Lappy the furball looks at you with amiable expectations. How do you respond to this? What makes you think we'll be your friend? <laughs> All right, let the adventure begin. Of course, the more the merrier, you exclaim, pumping your fist energetically into the air. But Melanie coldly interjects, no, I can't trust monsters. Melanie, the had a feeling that's not gonna work. Plus it's so cute. Thoroughly rejected by Melanie, Lappy bursts into tears. See what you did, Melanie. Lappy says he has no friends because of his aged face and speech. All alone, he decided to leave the village on a journey. Your party is silenced by the crying child with the face of a grown man. Doesn't it seems seem like even a... monsters have their problems. He doesn't seem like a grown man. Monster child, he seems young. You tell Melanie to be nice, and quip that both she and Lappy could use a friend. Exhausted from arguing with you, Melanie half-heartedly agrees. Fine, we can be friends. Good. Friendship. However, she says that they are on a dangerous journey to defeat the dragon. As such, they cannot take a child with them. Okay, that works. Lappy leaps up and hugs her in his excitement, <laughs> exclaiming, Thou hast made me so happy. Looks like Mel and Lappy became friends. Yes. Till next time, Melanie says, peeling Lappy off of her and placing him on the ground. Though she thought all monsters to be evil, 
Melanie feels that the ones here are different. Finally, a friend. Aw, Lappy. Wish we could take him, but he's little. Why does he have no friends? I know he does have an older type of speech, but it's still cute. I guess so. Oh, look at this place. Hello. Looks nice. You bow, but before you can speak, the man suddenly introduces himself as the village headman. He laughs, then shamelessly praises his own village as being wondrous and peaceful. And who are you? He asks. You're of interest. But the hero's gonna take down the dragon. Troop of traveling entertainers. No, we're heroes. After explaining that you are on a quest to defeat the dragon, the headman invites you to rest your feet a bit in his village. Well, thank you. He says that he had heard rumors of the dragon when he traveled the world. You must be tired from your journey. Have a seat. I will have my chef prepare a feast, the headman says, then claps his hands twice to summon a stewardess. As long as Mar doesn't eat it all like last time. Extravagant dishes that you have never seen before are placed on the table before you, each one looking more delicious than the last. So this is kind of suspicious that he's just feeding us all of a sudden, but okay. You're drooling, Melanie scowls. You hadn't even noticed. You wipe your mouth with your sleeve, then gasp as you turn to Mar. Perhaps in an attempt to hold himself back, Mar is gnawing on the table corner. Okay, good boy. There, there. We'll eat soon, you reassure Mar while gently stroking his head. The doors fly open in the next instant, and a girl runs in. With tears in her eyes, she tells you that her dear companion, Mr. Flobby the Slime, is missing. Really? Now, Mr. Flobby? The headman's eyes go wide in surprise. We must find that slime right away, he says anxiously. But the food. You are starving, but it doesn't look like you'll be able to partake of the feast before you because of Mr. Flobby's disappearance. Ah, uh, we'll look for it. We will find your slime, and then... We feast, you add quietly. Melanie reminds you that you are here to get clues about the dragon from the headman. What's the difference? Literally everything. Hunger taking its toll, you two begin to argue. Brave heroes, the headman interjects, then bows his head. Would you please find her slime? Oh, yes, we'll find the slime. It appears the story has hit a standstill until you find the missing Mr. Flobby. You need to hear the whole story from the young girl. Yeah, we saw you two hanging out earlier. What happened? I know what Mr. Floppy's friend has to tell. Okay. The girl sobs, wailing about the missing Mr. Flobby. Melanie places her hand atop the girl's head and promises that your party will find her companion. The girl then hands something to Melanie. It looks like the muddy handkerchief she used to wipe Mr. Flobby. Oh no, I don't want that. She asks Melanie to wipe Mr. Flobby with it after you find him. Melanie received a handkerchief. Regardless, Oops. looking aimlessly outside the village would be a waste of time. You decide to collect more information in the village. Oh, okay. Let's go talk to everyone again. Ask the good people of Univille for the dust and Mr. Floppy's whereabouts. Lappy, do you know? Melanie's friend Lappy is here. 
Lappy cuddles up to Melanie. Despite her hatred of monsters, Melanie doesn't seem to mind. Okay, cool. It seems like the girl who left the headman's house ran away in tears. The elderly man says she cannot have gone far. Well, I talked to her. The goblin dutifully tends his flower bed, eagerly anticipating the day they bloom. Yeah, bet you are. Eat them. The young boy wanders up to you. Okay, it's the same one. He's asking questions about our journey. Yeah, I read this one. Picture books Having for the kids. no interest in children's picture books. You continue on your way. Okay, no, not that one. Oh, Grand Chip. Oh, she's glowing. Okay, I didn't see that. She says she saw a suspicious man in black with a slime outside the village not long ago. The suspicious man in black stole Mr. Floppy? What? She claims they went northwest together. I thank you. Did that man take Mr. Floppy? You resolved to leave the village in search of the pair. Make your way northwest of Unionville. Ah, oh, event. As you make your way to the coast, a piece of paper nearly smacks you in the face as it blows past. You snatch it out of the air. It depicts a woman standing before a sunset. She smiles sweetly at you. Examining the background of the picture closely, you spot a lighthouse in the distance. Written on the other side of the paper is a single word. My darling dearest, I give you my love, my treasure, my everything. The only word you need to see, really. Treasure. Certain you'll come across it in your travels, you stuff the picture into your pack for safekeeping. Okay. Maybe the hint about this treasure at any time by selecting it from the key items menu. A drawing of the sun setting behind a smiling young girl in a small lighthouse. We're near the ocean? A heck, nameless shrine. It's a dungeon time. All right, let's go in the shrine. Though a torch is not strictly necessary, it would certainly help you find your way through the dimly lit shrine. Okay. I can use a torch. Check the nameless shrine for any sign of Mr. Flobby. Your footing is obscured in the dimness of the shrine. You should probably... Proceed with caution. Though I... You go forth slowly but steadily, taking it one step at a time. You take a good look at the floor and see it lined in trails of viscous liquid. No doubt a slime or 200 have passed through here. Slime or 200 indeed. The barging ahead probably wouldn't help. Unlock everything we can. Hello. It looks like poor Mr. Flobby is being held captive by the mystery man. Give us back, Mr. Flobby. Hand over that slime, you shout to the man in the dark. You speak as if I kidnapped him, he remarks, curtly turning to face you. Hello, who are you? When your eyes finally adjust to the surrounding darkness, you realize the man's clothes look eerily similar to Melanie's. They do, actually. A normal outfit. Melanie's mouth falls open in surprise. It seems the man has noticed Melanie as well. It looks like the two know each other. What do you suppose the relationship is? They are wearing matching outfits. The man says that he and Melanie came from the same village where this was their native dress. The man's revelation makes you realize that you know almost nothing about Melanie's past. 
And he has like a fairy looking thing as well. You take the chance to find out more. Melanie's hometown? You child of friends? You ask her if he is a childhood friend, but she holds her tongue. Then the man speaks. With forbidden magic, our clan has ensured the dragon. He begins when Melanie cuts in. Of what now? Forbidden magic and a dragon. She rattles on about the man, telling you that he is Vince, a lunatic obsessed with the dragon. Vince resentfully claims that he is searching for the noble dragon to protect it. You ran away from home with your tail between your legs, he ridicules. Enraged, Melanie lunges at Vince. You have so many questions, but realize that the most pressing matter is getting Mr. Flobby back. So you're ready for battle. Oh, okay. Careful. He won't go down easy. He won't? Yes, he will. I hope. <laughs> 100 HP. 23 attack, 10 defense. Happen stance cards are happening. At 3 to wind damage dealt by all allies and enemies. I don't have wind. He must be using wind though. Well, let's try poison. Yeah. Crit and poisoned. See if lightning's a thing with you. Never mind, he missed everywhere. Alright, crits are good. He does lightning damage and th yeah, thunder. Okay. She resisted. Good. Go poison. At three doll allies and enemies defense. Ah, enemies get it too. That's fine. Gonna try ready aim fire. Oh, that took a lot of points, though. Mine. Gonna slash. I'm gonna try and freeze him. Never mind the freeze! Resist ice. Okay, good to know. Ooh, plus ten. Look at you. Kind of rough. At three doll allies recovery rate. Nice. Works for me. Helps loose an air on you. Oh, that damage is nice. During the fight, Vince asks, Do you know the truth about that village? The headman may look like a nice old man, but he keeps those little monsters around too. He begins, but before he can finish, you, Fred, Hedwin, and Berwin of the Ivory Order appear. It's these jokers. The three brush you aside, fixing their attention on Vince. So you are the one who disturbs the peace, they exclaim, then charge at him. The Ivory Order and that false justice they serve are the true evil here, he retaliates, fighting back. Oh, whoa. Look at that experience, 1500. Vince looks like he has something he wants to say. I didn't get a chance. I leveled up, though. Ooh, spinning ray. Deal light damage to all enemies. Hello? That's new. Wisdom of Dyrids. Gain immunity, poison, deadly poison. Nice. Charge spell. Generate two gems. Oh, okay, nice. My level up. Seeing the two parties occupied with each other, you realize this is your chance to grab Mr. Flobby. Save Mr. Flobby. Perhaps wary of humans, Mr. Flobby dashes out when you draw near. Hey, we're here to help. Hmm. 
Vince is on equal footing with the three from the Order. You realize then that he wasn't fighting in earnest against you earlier. Oh, maybe because Melanie was there? Engrossed in their battle, the combatants pay you no mind. I got lots of experience rent. I don't mind. <laughs> it's fine. Let's go say Mr. Flobby. There you are. When you reach out to grab Mr. Flobby, he suddenly attacks. Ow, no. Lower Mr. Flobby's stamina to calm him down. So don't kill him off. Oh. Look at you. Kill Mr. Flobby. He's fine. Just knocked him out. Exhausted from the fight, the raging Mr. Flobby finally stops attacking. But it seems he hasn't yet come to his senses. He glares warily at your party. Find something to help return Mr. Flobby to normal. Ah, oh, the handkerchief. You wipe Mr. Flobby's mouth with the handkerchief you received from the girl. Then you hear a quiet voice speak. That's not my mouth, Mr. Flobby murmurs bashfully. It looks like the girl's familiar scent on the handkerchief returned him to normal. Having regained his senses, Mr. Flobby heads back to the village. You place the increasingly sticky handkerchief in your bag. Okay, save Mr. Flobby. Oh, gosh. Thunder roars of head. Watch out for lightning. Pull a four hard to avoid the lightning. Yes. You and your friends are lucky enough to make it through without being struck by lightning once. Nice. Well, I'm going to end this episode here. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.